One of my YouTube viewers recently asked me about a, a problem that he was having in looking at two signals that are set at the same frequency and uh, but not being able to view them in a synchronized way on, uh, on his oscilloscope and how do you get around that? So uh, whether you're doing it with a digital scope or an analog scope there are ways in many cases to actually look at stable waveforms. So what we've got set up here is I've got a uh, signal generator here that's putting out a signal at uh, 10 megahertz that's coming out here and uh, we've also got another signal generator up here that's also putting out a signal at 10 megahertz. Okay, I've got them going into a couple of scopes here, a digital scope over here, an analog one here. But let's take a look at these signals. I'm going to pull them off of here and let's, uh, let's go bring them up to this frequency counter up here. If I stick one in the counter Okay, I can see that's uh, 10 megahertz. I love these old Nixie tubes. And uh, let's put the other one here in the counter. That one's also showing 10 megahertz. So they look like they're pretty close, but that's only showing me five digits of resolution. Got another counter down here that's got a couple more digits of resolution. So uh, let's couple one of them in there. So that's showing 10 point, and it's going all the way down to oh, one or two flashing in the last digit there. Let's look at uh, the other one here and that one's showing the same thing. So as far as these two counters can see, these signals are pretty darn close to the same frequency. But as it is in life, nothing is perfect. So uh, we put these signals back into the scope here. You know, we'll see that you know, if we trigger on one, the other one is kind of moving because there is a very, very slight frequency difference. Okay. So how do we look at that? How do we uh, actually you know, stabilize the, resp the response there because I'm triggering on this channel up here so this one is moving because there's a very slight frequency difference we can see that walking um, and of course if we even count how many how long it takes or how many cycles go by per second we can actually measure the frequency difference but if I change the triggering to the other channel now that one becomes stable and the other one is walking okay so I can go back and forth so what's happening in the scope is we're, you know, we're alternating back and forth between channel 1 and channel 2, but we're only triggering on channel 1 or channel 2. So the other one is going to walk because it's not synchronized to the first, because they're not phase locked together. But the way to get around that on a lot of scopes, uh, certainly a lot of the Tektronix scopes, you have the ability of t telling the trigger source okay, to not only be either channel 1 or channel 2, but also in this case, it's called, there's a position called norm or normal. And what that will do is we'll take whatever you've got set up as your uh, vertical mode. In this case, we're alternating between channel 1 and channel 2. We can also have the trigger source alternate between 1 and 2. So if I simply push that up to norm, both of these now become stable because I'm triggering on one, and the, on one for one sweep and then the other for the other sweep. So that's how to stabilize that on uh, analog scope like this. Now the the name of that mode will be a little bit different on certain scope on different scopes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two signals and move them over to a newer analog scope to kind of show you the difference over here. So let's kind of go down here and I'll put these signals into this 2465 series scope. I've got the same thing going on here. One is walking with respect to the other. If we look at the trigger controls over here. You see I'm triggering on channel one. If I move that to trigger on channel 2, okay, now I can see the other one is stable. If I go back to channel 1, and then so I can go back and forth, you know, and see trigger on one and be, you know, not stable on the other one. But on this scope, instead of uh, that mode where we're going to follow the vertical mode being called norm, on this scope, it's actually called vert, V E R T. Uh, so we're going to follow the vertical mode. So it's just a matter of pushing the source button up one more time to select that mode, and now we're both stable because now the we can see that the vertical mode or the trigger mode is actually on this thing called vert, and we can see it's alt alternating between channel one and channel two, and uh, you can see a nice stable display. If I pull back here, you can see if I change that back to channel one or channel two, it's just moving back and forth. If I push it up again to go to the vert mode, both those lights are lit up over here and I've got a nice stable display. So on some analog scopes, I've got an older Heathkit uh, analog scope here that does not have that kind of a mode. So there really isn't a good way of stably triggering on these two signals that are very, very close in frequency. Okay. Similarly, a lot of the digital scopes don't have that vertical mode either, uh, that, that trigger uh, capability. So if we look here, if I go, if I can 
Okay, get in here so I can see it. I'm triggering on channel one here right now. Okay, so we can kind of see that nice and stable. If I move my, uh, if I go to the trigger and tell the trigger to trigger on, say, let's get that to focus on channel two. See now channel two is stable and the other one's moving. If I go through the choices here, you know, I can go to channel three, I can go to channel four, I can go to external, external divide by five, AC line, and back to channel one. So I don't have that alternate type of trigger mode where I can uh, sweep back and forth. But the really simple way to do this on a, on a digital scope is to recognize that uh, whenever we get a trigger, we're getting a sampled record of both signals. Okay, And what we're looking at with this thing rolling is multiple acquisitions. So what we do on the scope is go to a single sequence. Single sequence. So I just capture, just uh, basically capture one event. So now we're essentially, if I hit it again, we'll do another capture. Again, we'll do another capture. So each acquisition is going to be, you know, give you a stable result for both waveforms. Uh, so that's how you typically would do it on an analog scope, is just do a single acquisition and then go make the measurements and comparisons and things like that. Whereas if you're free running, you're running or triggered on one or the other, you won't be able to see them stably. So we can take a look here. We can, we can see there's probably a, a one or two hertz difference between uh, between these two signals in terms of how fast this signal is moving with respect to the other one. So if I take both of these signals, I can bring them up to this counter here is a bit more high resolution. So I'll couple one into uh, one channel here. I'm going to couple the other one into the other channel here. Okay. So right now we're looking at uh, the frequency of the signal on channel A. So we're 10 all the way down to about well, 1.7 hertz higher than 10 megahertz here. All right. And if I go and change, if I tell it to uh, measure frequency, and I want to measure frequency on channel B. Okay, right here. Okay. And that's showing 10.000 and then about 4 hertz. So I've got about a two, little more than 2 hertz difference between uh, those two signals. Now, you know, that's a small enough difference that I was not able to see them on the older, lower resolution frequency counters. But in this one, I can see it very easily. Um, and uh, again, if we watch the display here, you can see that uh, you know if I'm, how, how fast are these, you know, are these cycles walking past each other. So, so if I say... 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, it's about two cycles worth of drift that we're getting in a second, which would indicate about a 2 hertz difference between uh, these two signals, and that's kind of what we're seeing. So again, if I uh, go tell it to measure frequency, and I measure frequency on channel A, that one is uh, just under you know 2 hertz high, and the other one was about uh, 4 hertz high, so it's a, a 2 hertz difference. So that's how both on a digital scope, single sequence, or on an analog scope using, you know, either the a, a vertically driven, a vertical mode driven trigger, or like on this solder 465B, using the normal trigger mode. That's how you would actually go and change or set up the scope to give you a stable response on two signals that are very closely spaced in frequency.